to say it's indeed an honor and a pleasure to be here this afternoon, and as a landowner uh, that participated several years ago, uh, and for all the landowners that are participating, I'd like to congratulate you for your participation with ICF. And, uh, and the photographers uh, that are participating as well, uh, I know there's some that have participated before, and then of course there's a whole variety of new photographers that are, uh, have emerged on, on South Texas for, for this wonderful event. Uh, let me just tell you that you could not be coming at a better time. We've never had so much rain uh, in the last eight or ten months, uh, so it is going to make for some spectacular uh, picture taking uh, during, your, during your contest period. And, uh, and then again, for those landowners that are here, in fact, uh, I would be remiss, I, I saw that uh, uh, Hugh Fitzsimmons, uh, was, his ranch was going to be participating. I, didn't, I have not seen Hugh uh, here, uh, but I had the great pleasure of being on his ranch years ago, uh, and he's got a spectacular ranch, and I would also be remiss to one of my former colleagues in the legislature, uh, Buddy Temple, the Temple Ranch is also going to be participating. Uh, and there's just so many different ranches, and, it, and, and, and there's so much history associated with those ranches. And if you really want to uh, get to know not only your ranch, but also for the outside world to know your ranch, this is the, this is the contest that will do it. And uh, we were fortunate enough uh, several years ago uh, to come in second place. Uh, in fact, uh, we, we kind of felt that at the end of that contest that we, we might have won first place, but we got beat out. Uh, by the Fennessy Ranch, uh, who wins a lot of different uh, contests. They have a great photo uh, uh, set up on their ranch. And, uh, but as luck would have it, but again, uh, notwithstanding the fact that you will learn if you don't already know and appreciate your ranch, you're going to get to know it like you've never known it before if you will take the time out to work with your photographers and get to know them and the relationships that you will build will be will be lasting forever. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have uh, Dale Franz, who I understand is also participating again this year from Wyoming. <clears throat> and Dale and I have stayed in touch ever since uh, he was on our ranch. And, and we had the opportunity to, to get to know him and his family and, and his associates that came in and, and participated with him. And it was just a wonderful experience. Uh, in fact, Dale just also mentioned to me that one of the images that he took uh, has been purchased by Parks and Wildlife, and it's going to be uh, featured in, in the uh, Parks and Wildlife magazine uh, in the very near future. Uh, one of the images that he took, I think it was of a white owl uh, that he took at night, and he was holding a bunny rabbit in his mouth uh, when, he took, when he snapped that photo. Uh, and so again, <clears throat> for me as a landowner, it was very rewarding. Uh, we had only owned uh, this particular property for a little bit over uh, 12 years. Uh, we had participated previously in, a, in, a, in, a, in the Coast of Bend uh, Wildlife Contest, uh, and that particular one ran for about six months because the rains were so bad uh, that they just couldn't get out there and do any, any photography. The pro uh, side of it, of the ICF, is extremely well organized, and it's just the talent of photographers is phenomenal. But on top of all of that, in working with your photographers, for you, the landowners, uh, you know, you're going to get what you, what you put into it in terms of working with them. <clears throat> uh, you're going to learn some of the techniques, and if you like to do some photography, uh, you'll learn from, from some of the best in the world. Uh, and the techniques and the things that you will learn uh, are just phenomenal. I remember the very first time that, that uh, the Dale was on the ranch, uh, we were driving around, and we came up on a little pond, and it was just full of algae. And I said, I wish I could do something about that algae. I said, but it's just the way it is here on this particular pond. And he said, man, don't you do anything to that <laughs> pond. He said, that is a great backdrop for taking pictures. In fact, that became the centerpiece of the location where, where Dale worked uh, the majority of the time. And, uh, and so as a landowner, you get to appreciate not only the different species, of, of wildlife that are on your ranch. I mean, we learned that we had over 140 some odd different species of birds on a ranch. And I can tell you, and I know that a lot of you are here from South Texas, all we understand about wildlife is we got great white-tailed deer, we got great quail hunting, and we have great dove hunting. And beyond that, that was my world. 
But uh, these photographers and, and, and the involvement really opened up my eyes to the various uh, varieties of, of birds on, on, that are present, not only on the ranch, but also the ones that come in and migrate. And, and so uh, it's incredible now that, that when, when we drive around, we, can, you know, we know what to be looking for in terms of different nesting uh, uh, for different birds and, and the different quality of birds, and, and we're very conscientious of that. The other thing that was, became very significant, since we do a, a extensive wildlife management on our ranch, uh, all of a sudden, I can tell you that uh, where we used to shoot a lot of the coyotes on the ranch, that doesn't happen anymore. Those are $25,000 coyotes. Uh, and, and, I, and I have a greater appreciation, you know, because of the photos, after I saw the photos that Dale took of those coyotes, and I kept trying to figure out, now, how did they get on this ranch, and how did you end up taking a picture of coyotes? But he took some pictures of some coyotes uh, that were coming to the water holes, uh, and one of them was featured in the, in the book of, of two coyotes, but he also had one that he didn't, and it had four coyotes. And I was going, now, how in the world did four coyotes ever survive on my ranch? But we have not shot any coyotes. And, uh, and, and a lot of other things on the ranch that, that we took for granted and we just felt that, that we needed to, to be part of our management. I, I mean, we, we figured it out that they could coexist. And, and, and again, that's what every time I see a coyote, I said, man, there goes that $25,000 coyote. Because that's almost how much money we ended up winning as a result of, of Dale having the various species of wildlife to be able to photograph and whatnot, from the raccoons, from the possum. I mean, we found stuff that we didn't even know existed on the ranch, or at least we took for granted, or, or we never saw. And then, uh, and so again, uh, you will definitely gain a, a, a deeper appreciation for your ranch if you don't already have it. And, and I know that some of these ranches that are participating have been in the families for a long, long time, so I know that, that you probably already have a great appreciation for what you got. In terms of what it means and what the direction that the ICF is moving, and if you, if you stop and think about uh, in terms of the desire to generate income for your ranch, if you desire to open it up for photography, uh, there is an enormous industry that's out there. I don't have to tell you all that. And uh, we're excited, for example, in Duval County because we have, there's now a bed and breakfast that's being built in downtown San Diego. And it's going to be hopefully accommodating photographers as well as any photographers that we can accommodate on our ranch as well. Uh, but it's an opportunity to open up your ranch on a, on a limited basis under your conditions uh, to allow other people to also enjoy uh, the beauty that, that you have to offer on your ranch. And believe me, I think I've always said that in South Texas, uh, I happen to live in Corpus Christi, but I've always said that within one hour from Corpus Christi, you're, you're into the best wildlife refuge you'd ever want, the best hunting if you want to hunt, the best fishing, if you want to fish, if you want to observe and, uh, wildlife or whatnot, within one hour, you can observe just about anything you want to, you want to observe in terms of wildlife or reptiles or flowers. And right now, uh, it is just because of all the rains that we've been getting, it's just absolutely beautiful out there anywhere you drive around South Texas. And so for the photographers, uh, you're coming at the best uh, time of the year for the landowners. We're, we're, we're just happy as can be that, that we've got so much, uh, uh, our habitat is just in, in such great conditions. I know that I'm tickled pink because my feed bill has dropped uh, 60%. And, uh, and uh, where I was feeding last year during the drought, you know, 6,000 tons every 30 days. Right now, we haven't even had to go back and refill since January. So we're on a pretty good roll right now. I hope it lasts. I hope we get more rain in the middle of April uh, because that definitely helps with, with antler development. And, uh, but again, I mean, uh, but work with your photographers. Uh, and, if, and if you think you've, had, you've been around hunters, you ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, these guys are hardcore. They work hard. I mean, I know that I can only speak about the photographer that I had. And it was not unusual for him <coughs> to be going out there at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I kept trying to say, what in the world could he be doing? Until I saw what he was doing and, and, and the images that he was producing. And, and he would roll back in at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, and 
be up early and and get reset up again to go to go to different venues uh, throughout the ranch, and uh, and so uh, in working with them, you'll not only learn some of the techniques and whatnot. And I and I've got to I've got to because this was really a true funny story. Uh, I had been on the Kennedy Ranch who I do some work for on occasion. I'd been on the foundation on the on the Kennedy Ranch uh, with a. Uh, with uh, Mark Cisneros, the CEO of the Kennedy Foundation. And we're coming down a dusty Caliche Road, went up about a quarter of a mile up. I see something on the road kind of standing up, moving around, and I'm going, I said, what in the world is that? And the ranch foreman who was with us, as we're getting closer, and it was kind of goldish looking in the sun. And he said, oh, Lord, he said, that is a uh, coach whip. And I said, beg your pardon? He said, that is a coach whip snake. And he says, and, uh, you know, they come off the ground. He said, uh, they'll scare the heck out of you. They'll chase you if given the opportunity and whatnot. I'd never seen one. And, of course, I was just thrilled to death to see it. I came back that afternoon and, and run into my photographer, and I said, man, I said, I just happened to see a, a snake that I've never seen in my life. It's, it's a coach whip. And so he starts asking me about it, and he said, do you think we have any here? And I said, well, you know, they're, they're in South Texas. I said, I've never seen one on this ranch. But I said, but. You know, they may be already said, and of course, he's, he got all excited. He said, you know, that could really be phenomenal if we could ever see one or, or catch one. And I said, good luck. <laughs> and, uh, well, sure enough, four days later, I come back into the barn, and I mean, he's got this smile from here to here. And uh, I said, what's going on? He said, man, we caught one. I said, you've got to be kidding me. He says, no. And I said, well, how'd you do it? And he said, well, he said, I was going to my, to my station, and he said, and something come flying by my leg, and it startled me, and he said, and it went up the tree. And I said, and? He said, well, no. He said, I, he said, I distracted it, and I had my aide come grab, <laughs> grab the snake. And, uh, and so anyways, they took all these pictures, and then I said, all right, <clears throat> where did you release that snake? I said, my, wife is, <laughs> my wife is petrified about snakes, and she's been the hard sell about, we don't shoot rattlesnakes, we don't shoot coral snakes, we just... You know, we just leave them alone. And uh, he said, oh, right here, right behind the headquarters. I said, oh, my God. And I said, uh, and so what happened when you released it? He said, it was the funniest thing. He said, I wish I videotaped it. I said, what happened? He said, I turned him loose, and he started chasing my ape all around the yard. He said, for about 15 to 20 minutes, he said, I didn't know who was going to get tired first. He said, but he wouldn't stop, and the snake was just chasing him and chasing him. He said, he finally just stopped and just took off into the brush. Never to be seen, and Dale, I have not seen that snake since. And uh, but uh, but anyways, this was this was a uh, you know again part of the uh, some of the things that you will that you will see and you will learn. But uh, but the, your photographers you will learn are very very knowledgeable of what they're looking for, and the species and 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 the uh, and uh, and what to look for, the nesting patterns and and and, and what the birds will do. I mean, I never I never realized that a killdee lays its eggs right there on the ground and whatnot, and you become more conscious. I mean, I used to have them running around in front of my barn where I had peat rock and some, <clears throat> some caliche and stuff, and, and I'd always see them running around, and I, I never paid attention that they would be a nest there until they pointed out to me and said, look, I mean, and you all, I mean, they, they blend in so much into the, to the, to the common areas around them that you can't tell that unless you were specifically looking for it, you know, for you to be looking for the, for the nest and the eggs. Um, uh, I want to really, uh, first of all, uh, thank the ICF for giving me the opportunity to visit with you. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have, uh, hopefully within the scope that I'm capable of answering. But, uh, but I think this is an experience and an, an enjoyment that you're going to find. And again, I mean, I think the economic impact uh, to South Texas in particular uh, as this thing continues to evolve, is going to be tremendous. Uh, I think that after this contest here in Laredo, they'll probably be up to close to 30 different ranches uh, that are going to be uh, set up to allow photographers to come in for, for a fee to come and take photos. And I think that within, a, within the next five to six years, I think you're going to see the influx of, as we are being discovered, and because the industry is going so rapidly, uh, we will see the influx of photographers continue to come and enjoy what we so readily often take for granted. Uh, but the beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, and believe me, like they always say, the camera never blinks. 
and uh, but to learn and see the techniques that they used to lure and to get those award-winning pictures. And I mean, you know, they may be taken. Believe me, they're gonna, they'll they'll shoot twenty thousand images before it's all over in that short period of time. It's unbelievable what the number of pictures they'll take. But to get that perfect picture they want takes a lot of patience and a lot of effort and a lot of work. And so, uh, again, uh, uh, anything that you can do to help facilitate them, and they'll, I mean, they're very good about indicating, and they bring all their, they bring all their equipment. You don't have to worry about providing any equipment. It's just some of the, you know, help, whether you got a no Jeep or whether you got a Jeep where they want to be able to shoot at eye level at the high, or, or if you don't have, if you don't have shooting blinds in the ground or below ground where they shoot across those ponds, and, you know, you may have to borrow your neighbor's back hole like I did and, uh, and come in and dig a hole in order to get the photographer down at, at the level that he wants. But it's just little bitty things like that. Uh, other than that, I mean, I mean, they're very fully equipped, and, uh, and as long as they got a, a soft bed to crash in for a few hours a day and to take a nice hot shower, and, uh, and their eating hours are really odd because they don't eat like us. <laughs> I mean, you know, they, they ask, you know, your, your, your lovely wife will say, uh, you want to have dinner with us tonight? We're serving dinner at 7. And he said, no, can you make it at 3? Because at 7, I'm going to be back out in the field. <laughs> and so uh, other than that, I mean, uh, you're going to get along great uh, with these photographers. They're professionals, and, uh, and uh, we should treat them as professionals. Uh, but at the same time, I think that uh, it's just going to be an incredible experience for you, and you will learn more. And then the, the best part about it, the reason we did it was that, you know, we got at the end of, at the, end of the day, we, we, got a, we got a CD of all the various images that were taken that were submitted to, to the contest. And that's priceless, uh, to have those images of your ranch, uh, throughout your ranch, and to utilize and incorporate that on anything that you may want to keep in the future. Just a, 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 that, that in itself is worth it. I, I couldn't afford a photographer to come on my ranch and to try to lead him around to take pictures of things that I would see because, I mean, they already, they're already fully trained in what they're looking at. Plus, the contest allows for the various categories, uh, so you cover every spectrum of, of, of the different categories uh, as well. So it's just a uh, wonderful, wonderful experience, a great keepsake at the end of the day. Uh, win, lose, or draw, you will enjoy every bit of it, and you would have made a relationship that will, will, will be with you for a lifetime. And so again, uh, if you have any questions, I'd like to—I'd uh, be more than glad to try to answer any that you may have. Yeah. I'm still—I'm I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> yes. That's the other part about it. I mean, all of a sudden you start seeing what, what, what they do, and then your interest in cameras. I, I do a lot of video taping and whatnot. Uh, but all of a sudden, the camera has, has gotten my attention and whatnot, and, uh, and it, I've, I've enjoyed it, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, but I, I, as much hunting as I've done over the years, uh, there's nothing like getting up early in the morning and being in, the, in, a, in a deer blind or any kind of a blind and, and taking video uh, or taking. I mean, it's just as challenging as if you're out there with a bow or, or with a rifle or with a shotgun. I think it's even more challenging because, I mean, it takes absolute, you know, stillness and, and being able to blend in your surroundings and everything else to, to be able to take them. I, mean, I, I couldn't get over some of the pictures that, that Dale took, of, I mean, coyotes from here to the door, and to be able to get up that close and personal, I mean, it was just phenomenal. And, uh, but it's a tribute to, to his skills, but also to his, to his photography uh, skills as well. No other questions? And this group's a great group. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.